Hello, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought why not get a little bit topical, maybe even get a little bit controversial. The recent discussion about the overturning of Roe v. Wade has sparked a lot of confusion, a lot of anger, and a lot of anxiety for a lot of people. And it sparked that for me as well. But it also made me remember this one movie that came out in 2019 called Unplanned. I've actually seen this movie before, kind of. Me and two old friends tried to watch it like a year and a half ago. Uh, we couldn't get very far into it. It's not good. And also I did watch it quite some time ago, so I'm kind of going into this blind. The synopsis for Unplanned reads, quote, as one of the youngest Planned Parenthood clinic directors in the nation, Abby Johnson believed in a woman's right to choose until a life-changing experience turns her into an anti-abortion activist. Before I get into my breakdown and review of this movie, I need everyone to know right off of the bat, just so we are all starting at the same place. Abby Johnson is a fucking liar. This entire movie is based on a lie and is full of medical misinformation to push a conservative Christian agenda. Abby Johnson is a real person, yes, and she did used to work at a Planned Parenthood, but she claims that what made her quit and become pro-life is watching a 13-week-old fetus from a black woman be torn to pieces or whatever. It's like a titular point in the movie, though in the movie, for some reason, they made it a white woman, but whatever. However, Planned Parenthood has come out against Abby's claims and said that this is factually impossible Possible given the information in Abby's story. During the time that Abby said this happened back in 2009, there were no patients at the Planned Parenthood that she worked at that were beyond 10 weeks of pregnancy. And the only black patient was only six weeks pregnant, meaning you wouldn't even be able to see an actual fetus on the ultrasound. You would just see an embryo. So not only would you not see a fetus, you wouldn't see it fighting for its life like they make it out to be. And even further than that, the date that she claims that this happened on is also not possible considering the Planned Parenthood that she worked at only did abortions every other week. Uh, and the date that she chose didn't fall within a surgical week. Oh, and even further than that, Abby's best friend at the time named Laura, I say at the time because I assume they're not best friends anymore, also worked at a Planned Parenthood, even though it was at a different location, and they were constantly in contact during this time period. And even the best friend claims that her story is bullshit. Her word, not mine. And while she did mention seeing an abortion, she was not at all worked up about it or implied that it changed her views on abortion. And both Abby and Laura had gotten in trouble at work for emailing each other talking about their co-workers inappropriately. Super classy, by the way, you go girl boss. To the point where Laura was fired and Abby was on thin ice. She, got, she was like written up or something, whatever, reprimanded, whatever the official word is called. Uh, she was on like a behavior plan. She had to have weekly meetings with her boss. So Laura claims that this entire thing was just a way to get back at her boss because they were not on good terms. Oh, and even further than that, Laura also said that two weeks before Abby started to go public spewing around her bullshit, Abby told her that she was thinking of going to the Coalition of Life, who are those like stupid protesters that you see outside Planned Parenthood. The same people that harassed Abby when she went in for an abortion. Yeah, she's had not one but two, by the way. Anyways, she was planning on joining them because they offered her $3,000 to speak per gig as like a pro-choice to pro-life activist turned thing, you know, they're selling a story, right? And $3,000 per gig sounds pretty good for someone who was in such bad money problems that she was debating declaring bankruptcy. I don't know, that's just a little suspicious. Now, do I sound biased because I obviously am pro-choice and have a disdain for Abby Johnson? Yes, and I'm going to be as unapologetically biased as this bullshit movie and the bullshitter behind the bullshit is. So now that we've established that Unplanned is foundationally questionable, contradictory, opportunistic, and factually inaccurate. Let's actually get into the movie. Let's get into why it's all those things, yeah? So the movie begins with a happy little scene of Abby playing with her daughter and husband and having breakfast before heading off to work at Planned Parenthood. Then she's seen sitting at her desk when a coworker comes in and asks for her help because they need an extra person in the back. 
This is when Abby, through narration, lets us know that despite working at Planned Parenthood for eight years, she is the clinic director had never been present for an abortion or asked to help with one. So we go into the room and you honestly might have seen this scene before. It went pretty viral whenever this movie came out. A girl is lying on the table for an abortion and Abby sees a fetus on the ultrasound and the girl on the table is crying and saying it hurts while staff holds her down and basically forces her to have an abortion and Abby sees the screen of this fetus getting like torn limb from limb and fighting for its life as it's sucked into a little tube. It's not pretty. They make it bloody on purpose. While I was able to laugh at this scene during my viewing experience just because of how ridiculous it all was, I am also aware that this scene is so fucking manipulative and full of misinformation, so I know that for someone who's maybe not as informed as I am, this can be very damning towards abortions and can just be like a scary, disturbing scene. So let's talk about why this scene is so fucking absurd. First of all, the inaccurate portrayal of Planned Parenthood. No doctor is ever going to hold a patient down and essentially force them to get an abortion. This is a very common lie that anti-Planned Parenthood people spread about Planned Parenthood, that they're just like foaming at the mouth to abort every fetus that steps into their premises, and that's just not true. I meant to say as they enter the premise, not as they step into the premise, because they can't really step, but I don't know, enjoy that mental image. They do not have a little pizza party if they hit abortion quotas or do walk-in same-day abortions. Most Planned Parenthood locations don't even have the equipment to perform surgical abortions. In Texas, where this movie takes place, and pre-heartbeat bill, since that wasn't in effect at the time of this alleged horrifying experience that Abby witnessed, here are all of the hoops that a pregnant person has to go through before getting an abortion. First, you have the initial appointment to confirm the pregnancy, and if you're under 18, you need parental notification of the pregnancy and also the consent to move forward. You have to go to counseling, sometimes more than once, to talk about your options, the procedure, basically discourage you from getting the abortion. You have to have an ultrasound of your fetus with the doctor describing the image of your little bun in the oven to convince you not to get an abortion. After the ultrasound, you have to wait 24 hours before getting the procedure, just so you have to sit on that mental image of the fetus. Again, it's just a tactic to get you to change your mind. Then after that, you can go ahead and schedule it and move on with the procedure. Pro-lifers love to spread the idea that Planned Parenthood and similar clinics are just handing out abortions to anyone that asks, and that's just not true especially in Texas, the complete opposite is true. You are given option before option and hoop after hoop to jump through. In Texas, and assumably most states, if not all of them, abortion is treated as a last resort. And you can also change your mind about getting an abortion at any time. Literally up until the last second, you can say, wait, I'm reconsidering, and the procedure won't move forward. So this idea of them holding this girl down at Abby's clinic in order to perform the abortion is literally just fear-mongering. Now, on to the other half of the misinformation in just this one scene. We're only seven minutes in, by the way. The fetus. While the size of the fetus is actually pretty accurate for the 13-week age, the idea that it was fighting for its life or that it was in pain by the procedure is not true. According to medical experts, a 13-week-old fetus does not have that level of cognitive function and can't feel pain because the required neurons to feel pain aren't even developed until the third trimester. So it can't feel pain, meaning it can't flinch away from the tube or try to grip onto the uterus walls like it was in the movie. Also, the excessive blood and tissue is very inaccurate as well. While there are chances of complications, as there are with any surgery, only 2% of surgical abortions have complications, and it is incredibly rare for them to be that severe and dramatic as they're shown in the movie. Although the movie isn't displaying it as a complication, they're displaying it like every standard abortion is just like that, when it's not true. Okay, I'm ready to move on from that stupid ass scene now. Let's continue. So Abby runs to the bathroom and starts sobbing after seeing such horrors that totally happen and this isn't all a lie at all. And then it cuts and we are now eight years earlier. We're flashing back. Abby is now a junior at Texas A&M University and she's at some job fair talking to a representative from Planned Parenthood and this scene is like annoying but also kind of comical because what the representative is saying is literally fucking true like how they're a women's health clinic and how they provide options and contraceptives and their goal is to make abortions rare but based on the framing of this movie they're trying to make it out like that's a lie and it's literally not the writers literally just wrote out a fact and then said well, I don't think abortions are okay, so this is actually not a fact, because I said so. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. So Abby is convinced to sign up as a volunteer for Planned Parenthood. Then there's more narration as she's driving to like her first day as a volunteer about how she's like not telling her mom what she's doing. And she says, never trust a decision you don't want your mom to know about. However, it was previously established that her mom is pro-life and wouldn't understand that Abby is working to decrease the amount of abortions. So you've already undermined your little piece of advice. They really said, my mom is so dumb and ignorant that I can't tell her what I'm doing because she's incapable of comprehending it. By the way, not telling your mom what you're doing is probably a sign that you shouldn't be doing it because you're doing something wrong. What? Like, why would you set yourself up like that? So anyways, once Abby is escorted inside the clinic, she meets Cheryl, the clinic director. She is portrayed as this cold woman. You know, she seems maybe she has an agenda. Maybe she hates God and she hates babies. Or maybe this is just how Abby makes her out to be because again, she was beefing with her boss and got in trouble at work before her drastic shift in moral compass, which was not at all suspicious or motivated by money. This scene is also where the Coalition for Life is introduced, and they are purposely portrayed as the nicer protesters that genuinely care about the woman and the fetus rather than just demonizing the woman. Of course, they are portrayed like this because Abby goes on to join the Coalition for Life, and again, this is all propaganda, but the Coalition for Life is literally notorious for giving women false claims that they'll provide monetary support or even adopt the baby as long as they don't go through with the abortion, but they obviously don't go through with those claims, but you know, they're just such angels. Then Abby explains again through narration that before she started volunteering at Planned Parenthood, she had an abortion and the way it's portrayed is thankfully less misinformed and gruesome, but it's still not portrayed positively. However, she then admits to having a second abortion, which was chemically induced. It's known as a medical abortion where they like take the pill and it is portrayed as very gruesome. Also, before the actual gruesomeness of the scene, she says, I never saw the ultrasound image. Lie. That's a fucking lie. Up until the heartbeat bill was passed, it was literally Texas law that you have to view the ultrasound while having it described to you by a doctor. How are you just gonna fucking lie as if it's not the law that people can just look at? Like, how do you think you were gonna get away with that? That's a lie. So yeah, the actual scene of like the abortion is pretty gross and uncomfortable. And while the medical abortion is more painful and more bloody, again, it's not as extreme as they show it to be. It's just a fear tactic. So after that, she graduates from A&M and she is now no longer a volunteer and an employee and a very passionate one about the cause. We see her start to work her way up the Planned Parenthood career ladder while simultaneously trying to start going to church and getting more into faith with her husband but she mentions not feeling very welcome because of the Christian views on abortion, which is honestly kind of a subtle display of Abby's lack of intelligence because this establishes that religious opposal to abortion isn't fact-based at all, yet we know that Abby goes on to disregard all of the scientific knowledge that she's had for almost a decade and joins the Coalition of Life, which is very tied to Christianity, as is the whole pro-life movement, but Whatever. The way this movie is too dumb to realize that it continuously, subtly shows how stupid Abby and everyone behind the movie is. Gotta love it, kinda. Anyway, so there's this scene where Abby is at work and she takes a pregnancy test and it turns out to be positive and Cheryl, the clinic director, is like in the bathroom. It's like one of those, it's not like an individual bathroom, you know, there's like the stalls and shit. So Cheryl comes out and she says something like, you know, we can take care of that for you if you'd like. And then she's also seen again trying to convince Abby to get an abortion because the baby will need more of her attention and they want her to stay at Planned Parenthood as much as they can. It's just another Planned Parenthood is evil and loves killing babies bit. Uh, I'll take thing that didn't fucking happen for $500. Then it cuts to Abby consulting a girl that's about to get an abortion and there is, of course, a complication with the abortion and they have to bring her back into the back room and they're all scrambling and there's people touching the patient with no gloves. Abby is in there despite having no medical education. Huh, that's weird. It's almost like this movie is trying to make it out like Planned Parenthood is negligent and consistently has complications with procedures and is also unprofessional and uneducated. And again, I'll take things that didn't fucking happen for $500. Anyways, Abby gives birth, congrats, and she got promoted to clinic director, congrats. Skipping ahead because nothing of importance or excitement happened for a bit, there's now a four year time skip into the future. So we are still four years before the beginning of the movie when she has her life changing lie. I mean, her, 
her life-changing experience. It's weird how they go back and forth between Planned Parenthood is evil and Planned Parenthood is a saving grace for women. There's this scene where Hurricane Ike is happening and so they have to reschedule a bunch of procedures for one day because of like, I don't know, traveling or safety. It's not honestly well explained, but they perform 30 abortions safely and efficiently in one day. Isn't that weird how when something goes wrong, it's really dramatized and focused on and shaped narratively as if it's common and all abortions are bad, but then when they successfully perform 30 back-to-back -back abortions with zero issues, it's literally never mentioned beyond that sentence. So after the 30 abortion scene, Abby comes home and her husband is mad because he's pro-life and Abby for some reason has blood splatters on her shoes and he goes, are you proud of yourself? And then Abby says, nobody ever said abortion was pretty. Which like, yeah, I guess nobody's ever said that, sure. But that doesn't mean that every abortion is this bloody gross mess that they're making it out to be. Also, why would she have blood on her shoes if for one, they just said every abortion went well. And for two, she's the clinic director, not a doctor. She shouldn't have even been in the room for blood to get on her shoes. Anyways, next scene, they're at some convention and Abby gets employee of the year. Congrats, that's not the point of this scene. This scene in the movie is to push the Planned Parenthood has an abortion quota thing that pro-lifers love to use as an argument, even though this has literally never been proven and it's only an idea because two alleged former employees who are anti-abortion activists said that this was true and that they'd throw pizza parties if they hit their quotas. This scene also tries to push that Planned Parenthood performs abortions at 24 weeks, which is only partially true. Abortions are done for medical reasons that late, like if something is going wrong with the pregnancy or with the mother to where continuing the pregnancy to full term would harm the mom. That is almost always the reason for an abortion 24 weeks or later. But of course that's not explained, so it just looks like Planned Parenthood is like, yes, we can kill even more babies now, which is just like not the fucking mentality. It's not like the motive. So then Abby and Cheryl kind of get into it because Abby's like, hey, I don't really want to double like the abortion quota that doesn't fucking exist, but whatever. And then Cheryl gets all mad because again, she's like evil because she loves abortions. And she says this line, abortion is what pays for your salary, yada, 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 pushing the narrative that Planned Parenthood pushes abortions because it makes them the most money, which is yet again, not true. You can look at Planned Parenthood's annual reports. They are public information. Abortions make up only 3% of Planned Parenthood services annually. So sure, one appointment for an abortion makes more money than one appointment for getting a birth control pill or an STD test. But majority of the services they perform are STD testing, contraceptives, cancer screening, stuff like that. Again, 3% of their services annually are abortions. So even though it is more expensive, they aren't majorly making money off that. They don't need to rely on abortions. Anyways, next scene, Abby and her husband are out at dinner and they're in a restaurant that has like a TV in the corner that's playing the news. And the news announces the death of Dr. George Tiller, who was a real abortion doctor that was shot to death. And Abby is distraught and she goes, what kind of person would shoot a person in the head in church? Babes. Pro-lifers. Pro-lifers killed him. <laughs> Anyways, next day, Abby gets a call from HR and she is asked to go to Houston where like the bigger branch is and she is reprimanded for challenging Cheryl's authority. That's a weird way to say that you were caught emailing your friends inappropriate messages about your coworkers. Oh, but of course they're not gonna talk about that or explain that that's the real reason because then Abby wouldn't look like such an innocent, naive girl that was coerced by these devil-worshipping pro-choicers and she just had no idea what she was doing, you know? She was just so innocent. Sure. After that, she goes back to work and she's going in as this guy is wheeling out one of those plastic barrels of toxic waste. And I don't know the medical term for it, but it's uh, the like leftovers of the terminated fetuses. And the Coalition for Life people are there and they like pray over the barrels. And at the same time as that is happening, Abby is called into the back room because they need another person. And we are back where we started at the beginning. So then after witnessing the abortion, Abby goes to the Coalition for Life people and she cries and she says that she's 
quitting Planned Parenthood. And the coalition people are, of course, her saviors that help her out because obviously they're made out to be like a godly little gaggle. So now Abby is a changed woman. She quits Planned Parenthood and that's kind of basically it. She cries about killing babies. She hangs out with the coalition. She's now on the other side of the fence harassing patients as she was once harassed. But now I guess harassment is like actually a good thing because sure, why not? And she spreads misinformation to patients and it's basically come full circle. The end. In terms of the technical side, the actual filmmaking of this movie, I mean, it's fine. It's very safe. You know, the color grading, the camera movements, it's all safe, standard stuff. Nothing was bad, but nothing was memorable. The only thing I would say was bad on the technical side is the sound mixing. The music was always way too loud in comparison to the dialogue, and also the writing could use some work whenever they weren't spreading misinformation. The dialogue was just kind of forced and corny. But on the non-technical side, wow, oh my god, fuck this movie and fuck every single person behind it. It is so egregiously irresponsible and dangerous to spread this much misinformation and propaganda. If you actually care about children, do something for the living ones. The ones that you swear that you'll adopt if that girl doesn't abort it, but when the baby comes out, you're nowhere to be found. You're pro-life and care about the children, but 192 Republicans voted against a bill that would fund the baby formula shortage. You're pro-life, but if the baby ends up being gay or transgender, then they're burning in hell and you don't care if they get hit by a bus. You're pro-life, but you don't care about the women that are gonna die in childbirth if they're forced to carry a baby to full term due to your abortion laws. You aren't pro-life. Life. You're pro controlling people with uteruses. Fuck you. Fuck Abby Johnson. Fuck every white man that can't even tell you what an IUD is, but is now trying to act like a medical expert on abortions. And fuck this stupid movie. That's all I had to say. Um, I mean, yeah, this was stupid. I'm glad I didn't have to pay for this movie um, because wouldn't want to do that. Abby Johnson, I know, I don't know where you live, but uh, we only live like. Mm, 40 minutes away from each other. You're in Round Rock. I'm in Austin. Let's meet up. We can tussle. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, am I? No, yeah, I am. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go because it's 1130 and my boyfriend's sick and I have to go take care of him. Oh, also, hold on. In my notes, I wrote down a quote from him that he said I could use. Where is it? 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 Oh, there it is. Quote, this movie sucks. End quote. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, like the video. If you liked the video, comment on the video. If you, what did we, what? Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, like the video. If you liked the video, comment on the video. And if you liked the video, subscribe to the video maker and I will see you in the next video. Cool. Okay, bye. <laughs>